Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to start tearing apart my transmission. There's nothing wrong with it mechanically, but it's dripping oil in several places. I'm gonna to try to show you here. I'm not sure how well this is gonna show up, but you can kind of see here, there's little uh, seal rings that go in behind these plates on these shafts for the shifter sh uh, shafts. And you can see how wet, I'm hoping you can only get the light on it, see if that helps. Okay, you can see how wet that that is right there. See that? I can wipe it off. And the same way on this one, you can see how it's wet on the bottom here. It's not much, and it just uh, drips maybe once a week or something, or once a month, and not very much. Um, but it, I've got it out again, and I know it's leaking, so why not fix it now? It's only going to get worse. The other thing is, too, when I was messing around with my speedometer, um, if you've seen in my previous videos, I was having issues trying to get speedometer gear to work in the transmission. And I tried splitting the caser when it was still in the car to pull it off. I couldn't get it off, so I just bolted it back up. I couldn't get in there to seal it or anything. So I noticed down here at the bottom now I get a couple of drips. So um, I'm going to take this apart, put the new gaskets in here, and seal it up. Now the front of the transmission, there is no seal in this uh, front plate here. It's just got a, a slinger ring that goes between the bearing and this housing, and it just keeps the oil from getting up in here. It's got a weep hole here. If it does get up in there, uh, it'll weep out into the throwout bearing and keep it from getting into the clutch. But um, as long as you don't overfill this, you should never get a, a leak here. I, the newer Muncie's, I believe, they put a, a, a lip seal in here to seal it off completely, but on these older ones, they didn't. The other place it can leak at, and I think mine might be leaking a little bit, you can see it looks wet around that shaft. Um, this is one of the, the shafts that hold a set of gears, and it fits in this housing here. And when you put it together, you're supposed to clean it real good and put silicone in there when you slide the shaft back in. I don't think that was done last time it was apart, because I can see it's, it's wet right there. So I'm gonna pull that out, reseal all that, check all my gears, my synchronizer and everything while I have it apart. Uh, the other place it's leaking is back here at the back, just a little bit. And I've got just a little bit of play in this in this bearing. So I've ordered a new bearing. I ordered a whole kit for a gasket set for this. I got the rear seal, a new uh, uh, steel back bronze bushing to go in here. I've got the gaskets for here. I've got the gaskets for my uh, three shifter uh, shafts. And then um, what I'll have to do is, like I say, on that front shaft up here, I'm going to have to just use silicone on it. So i got to start tearing it back apart. And while I got it apart, uh, in my previous videos, I showed where my speedometer would not work out of the transmission. And with this in the car, you really can't see up in this hole. You can feel up in there. And I can feel the gears there, and it's all right and everything. And I don't know if I'll try to get, um, get the light in here. A little bit you can see that gear down in there it looks like a bunch of lines there on the far side see it down in there well if you look you can see a round circle worn in that back face that's where the little thrust in on the uh, the plastic gear that goes into the speedometer shaft runs and it's really hard to see this way I'm hoping I can show it better once I get it apart but that that sh that gear has shifted back towards the back of the transmission a good quarter of an inch or so. So it's just barely catching that gear. And I think that's why it's not working. So I'd really like to be able to use this again. So while I've got it apart. I'm going to reset that gear, figure out first off why it moved. It shouldn't have moved and uh, press it back down on the shaft to the right location, put it back together and see if it works. If it does, I might just for grins, I might try to hook it up. My other setup with that um, GPS box I got from Jags, it works fine. The only thing is when you start out, it reads zero until you get up to about 20 miles an hour and then all of a sudden it bounces up and bounces a little bit and it reads about 20, bounces around a little bit and as you go up, it, it levels out. But for some reason it doesn't start spinning until you get um, up to about 20 miles an hour. So I don't know how long that's gonna keep working. So. <laughs> Um, I'd like to be able to get this where I can get back to having it all the way it should be original. So I'm hoping that gear 
whoever had this transmission part pushed that gear on too far didn't realize it and that's what happened i'm hoping it's not like worn loose on the shaft i mean there's it really shouldn't be there's not much pressure on it so um, i'm hoping it's an easy fix and the gear looks okay i spun it i held a screwdriver against it out here and best i could put pressure on it spun it it's not it's not slipping on the shaft at least with the pressure i could put on it that way i don't know how good that is so once I get it apart, I'll be able to tell and, and determine if it's worth fixing or not. So what I'm going to do is i gotta, I got to pull my shifter off, my linkages, and then I can pull, once I get this, the shifter off, I can pull the shifter mounting plate off, and I can take the four bolts out that hold this, this uh, tail shaft in. i got to take a, this pin out of here, right there, you can see that little pin. i got to take it out. And then you pull the, sh the shifter rod up to disengage the shifting fork from the gear, and then it should pull right off the back without any problem. That's a plan anyway, so let me get some tools and then get my camera reset, and we'll do that next. First thing I'm going to do is I, I pull the yoke off here to let the oil drain out of the back part of the transmission. I already pulled the side plug off and drained the main case. It's still got oil in it. I can't get it all out, so I'm going to have a little bit of a mess when I do this. But I'm going to go ahead and pop this seal out so it'll let a lot more oil drain out. I got to replace that anyway. So The seal has a nice lip on it so you can get a hold of it and you can see how the oil is coming out a little better. Just a, a lip seal and uh, I mean it looks in pretty good shape. But he, he supposedly replaced all that stuff when I bought it from him. So Now the next thing that I need to do is take these clips out of here out of the three uh, shift linkages. Let's see. I believe this this is reverse. I, I believe this is one, two, and this is three, four. I'm pretty sure. So what I gotta do is try to push those down and out. And when you set these up originally, you can see how that fits right in that hole without any problem. This this uh, shifter comes with this little plastic pin that goes in this hole here. So I just had it in there. And there's holes in, in the three uh, shift arms and in the main housing. When you put that in there, that's all, all three uh, rods that are in the neutral position. And that's how you want to set your arms. And, and if, it's, if this wouldn't go in there like that, you'd, you'd take this and you'd back it off a turn or one way or another until you got that where that falls right in there. And with that in there and all these levers in neutral, and you set that to that, then you know that the shifter linkage is set. It's really easy to do, pretty foolproof, um, and it, it worked. I mean, I don't have any problems with the way the car shifts or anything. So um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and take these out. And I bought... They come with little plastic bushings here. And these are hardened steel bushings that I bought from a company. And I'll, I'll put their information in the, in the description of the video if you want to look, contact them. They do transmission rebuilds. You can buy the kits for them, the gaskets. Uh, you can buy torque converters, or I'm sorry, um, flywheels and clutches and uh, uh, pressure plates and just different parts for different transmissions so um, the, these are supposed to hold up better not wear out as quick uh, the other ones are plastic you know they get over time they get brittle and breaks so I'm gonna take the rest of these out and then we'll take the uh, shifter off And that's the shifter assembly. If I could take and knock this pin out of here now. pin out, it's a little taper pin, and this will come up. I'm going to have to get a hold of it to get it up. I'm going to go ahead and take these off first. Look 
so shaft is coming up. It's all the way out. Now I should be able to take these looks like six bolts off of there. This is where it would be nice to have a transmission stand. Okay. There's a little shifter paw that goes on the end of this shaft here to make it shift. And I'm making a mess here. Put that drain over there. Just like that. And then it came off of there, I believe. It all looks pretty good. You can see where it engages. It's it's rounded like that naturally, but it's it's got a little bit of bang to it there. Somebody slam it in gear with it's not ready to go in. On a Muncie transmission, these two gears are synchronized. This one's not. So you, you want to put it like in first gear before you try to put it in reverse. You just want to go slam it in in reverse because sometimes it'll it'll grind the gears like that. So, it all looks good. Well, it feels good. That looks to me like it should be up. Okay, if you look at the front edge of this gear and then the shaft, you can see how it's shiny up to that point. It looks to me like it needs to go on at least that much further um, because the gear... This gear is running right about here, like that. So it's just catching the edge of that gear, and I think that's why it ate it up. That gear is sitting right about there. I'm hoping I can just slide something down on there and drive that gear on back where it belongs. And for some reason, it, it wasn't put on far enough to begin with, I think is the problem. So I think if I can do that, we'll be as good as new. Okay, so I'm going to take these uh, side cover bolts out now. Okay, now on a Muncie transmission here, they've got these little paws here. So as this goes up and down, depending on what gear you have it is, you can't, if these are working correctly, you can't put it in like first and fourth gear at the same time. Now you can put it in reverse in one of these gears at the same time because they're not uh, connected together. So you'll be careful there when you're jamming gears. But it, it's really a nice setup. It's designed to where in theory, if everything's working correctly, you, you, can't, you can't get it in two gears at once. So that's kind of a nice setup. And these are the shifter forks. They do have a little bit of wear. They're not bad. You can see a little bit of wear there. I don't really think it's enough to worry about too much. It feels pretty good in the, in the gears. Same with that one, it's got just a little bit of wear. It's got some cracks in it. 
I might need to order me a couple new ones of those. I don't like that, but you can see the cracks in that. That's not normal. The gears look pretty good. The synchronizers look really good. Um, I think overall it's a pretty decent transmission. If you can see those... It's kind of hard to get the light in here because it's magnetic. And, of course, my housing is aluminum, so I can't stick it. But these, these brass rings you see in here with the teeth, like here, um, the one back here, there's one up here. That's, that's the synchronizers. As you're shifting from one gear to the other, that helps the gears line up because you've got to lock into the steel teeth on the gear here or back here. And this kind of just uh, engages and lets it engage into these a lot smoother so you get your gears grinding and grabbing and stuff. But as you can see, the teeth look really good on all my gears. They're not all chewed up or anything. The synchronizers look, they really look brand new. Um, he said he, he always put all new stuff in whatever needed, so I, I'm very impressed with what he did. Uh, and overall, it looks in really good shape. So, I'm not going to take any of this stuff apart or mess with it. I do have to watch out because when I pulled my... Um, tail housing off uh, there's a shaft that goes through here in through there to that gear in there and there's a thrust washer in there so i gotta make sure when i put it back together that that all matches up so i'll probably put the tail tail assembly back on before i put this cover plate on so i can get there and make sure that's all matching up so um the only thing i really got to worry about is this i do need to get this plate off i guess i'm gonna have to just take it completely apart because uh, I, I have to get I have to get this shaft out down here and get it cleaned up and silicone it when I put it back in to get it sealed. So I, I pretty much got to pull that out anyway. I really didn't want to. Everything seems to work good in there and look good. So other than these shift forks, I might order me two new shift forks. I just don't like that cracked. That just scares me. Yeah, it's cracked on both sides there and over here. This one doesn't look cracked, but it does have some wear. So if I'm replacing one, I might as well replace them both. I mean, like I said, I don't want to have to do this again. I'd rather spend a few extra bucks here than to uh, have to take this thing back out again. There's one of those synchronizers. Okay, that's the main shaft assembly. When I pulled that shaft out, this end of this shaft, a bearing rides on there, and then the other end up in this shaft is where the bearing goes up in there. But the problem is the bearing, the cage, and the rollers are all separate. So when I put this back together, I'm gonna have to stand this up and put those gears or those um, rollers and that cage or anything down in that housing, down in that shaft, and pack it with grease to hold it in place while I um, put it together. It's going to be kind of fun. Pull the, uh, the four bolts out of this end right here, these here, and pull this off, and then hopefully I can knock this shaft out. I have to count these when I get it. Get done here and make sure I got them all out of here. I'm missing two. And I see them. They're over here in this other gear. There we go. 17. So that should be right. So now we can turn this around. That's part of my reverse gear setup. So let me take. And you gotta watch this because it's got a it's got a little weep hole here inside. You can kind of see this little dip in the casting here. There's a weep hole that lets the oil, if it gets past that slinger, come down and go back in the case. So that's you gotta make sure you put that back on the same way you take it off.
Okay, got it full of silicone there. That's not good. I think that's what I was seeing in that in that gear, that stuff there. That's what it looks like. They over siliconed it. Um, but you can kind of see the, um, this is the weep hole right here where the oil gets in here, runs through the gear or through the bearing and then goes back there and goes back in the case. And there's a couple of flats back in there on this nut. Unfortunately, I don't have anything thin enough to go back there and fit it. So you can see what they've done before. The same thing I'm about ready to do is uh, put a uh, big set of channel locks on here and break it loose. That is a left hand thread. So, you, you know, you got to spin it this way to break it loose. It really shouldn't be that tight doesn't need to be that tight but we'll see yeah I'll see it not very tight at all oh that came out easy yeah I mean everything looks good just a little bit of dirt down in there, kind of don't understand that, but okay. Burn feels good. So clean that out. Okay, just knock it back in because there's mm, I just read it out. There's bearings in this gear down inside of there, just like that was on there where the rollers are separate from. Cage and everything, and I don't even think it's got a cage on this one. Let's see, oh, I'm losing my bearings. We got. Two, four, six. And I dropped several on the ground here. Nine. Okay, I found 12 so far. I don't know if that's all of them or not. We'll find out here pretty quick when I pull this out. Nope, nope, there's more falling out. Lots more. <laughs> I don't know if you're catching that on there. You can see the, the rollers falling out of here. Okay. Oh, there's all kinds more in there. Ok, 
Okay, I got these spacers going there and all these bearings. And the fun part's gonna be putting that back together. So I'm going to thrust, thrust washer on this end. And the thrust washer on this end. And then there's a little key that keeps them from spinning in there. Hey, the gears look good, everything looks good. I think the only thing I need to order are those shift forks. Okay, so what I'm gonna have to do next is I'm gonna have to clean all these gaskets off, clean up, well, that came off easy. <laughs> Maybe it won't be as hard as I thought it would be. Clean all this up real good. I'll pull the gasket off of here. I've, I've got all new gaskets coming, um, all new seals. Like I said, the only thing I don't have coming are those shift forks. I'm gonna have to order those tonight. And get those come in. It'll probably take a week or so for those to come in. So um, it's probably about all the further I'm going to go on this today. I'm clean these two plates up, or on each side. Clean this plate up, and I've got new gaskets coming for there. Get all the crap. Clean everything up as best I can. Um, you got to kind of watch on this is. This is the end that goes towards the input shaft on the transmission. And this um, little throwout ring here, this engagement ring, there's three little dogs. You can kind of see them. You can see these three little square keys right there. They're kind of spring-loaded in there. When you pull it, you want to be careful you pull it apart, they'll drop out and you'll lose them. So um, I'm going to try not to take any of this apart. I'm just going to maybe spray it down with some brake cleaner and get the dirt off of it. And hopefully that'll all stay together. Um, this bearing looks good in, in this housing. Everything else looks really good. The only thing I'm going to have to do, and I have to be careful when I do it, I'm going to try to get a piece of tubing or something that will slide over that, like that, and drive against that gear. That should have done it. It should be back where it belongs now. I might try to uh, slide this up on there and just see if I can tell if it's back where it needs to be. Like that. That looks pretty good right there. So I think that's all the fur we're gonna get today until I, um, I'll go and get the parts cleaned up. And then when my other stuff comes in, we'll put the thing back together.